All right, I'm picking up where I left off. I have a floor, backboard, camera, light, and if you press play, you can see your box there. Let's go ahead and add a ball or a marble into the scene. I'm going to make this marble its very own scene and I'm going to like add it in after after the fact. So, I'm going to create a new scene by hitting that plus sign at the top. Then I'm going to add an other node. The node that I'm looking for is Rigid Body 3D. I'll hit Create. And I'm going to call this my Marble. And I'm going to save this scene. So Control S. And I'm going to save this in Scenes, but I'm going to call it an Object. So I'm making another folder inside of my Scenes called Objects. There we go, Objects and I'll save it in there, the marble object. <laughs> All right, so this uh, marble currently has no mesh. So let's add a mesh. And the mesh I'm gonna add is gonna be a sphere. There it is. And I don't know how well this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try it, let's say simple um, single collision. Let's, oh, that looks. I see a lot of a lot of uh, vertices. I don't want that. Let's do it again. Let's see. Well, let me do that. That one's okay. I'm just testing this. I haven't done this before, so it's a little off script. All right. I don't like any of those, so I'm gonna just stick with the standard. So I'm going to click on Mesh, or actually Marble, and I will go to Collision, Collision Shape, and I will choose the new sphere. So that sphere is like way simpler. It's pretty simple. It doesn't get much simpler than that. Um, I want this marble to be simple because I potentially am going to add a bunch of these and if I don't make it simple, it can get very probably pretty laggy. All right, so I've got my marble now. Um, so this marble is its own scene. I've saved it. So if I want to add this marble into this other world here, it's not too hard. It's not too complicated. You can, instead of clicking on the plus sign to add a new object, you're going to hit the link button right there. So I'm going to link in, and I want to add in my marble. Now the marble is right there. I can pull it and move it out, and I can move it around. Let's put our marble at the top just so we can see what happens here. Does it do what we want? So there's the marble. I can hit play, and boom, I got a marble there. All right, so this marble, if I want to add another one, I, I don't have to go through the process of remaking all that. I can hit the link and add another one, I think. Why didn't it let me do that? Put another marble in here, please. Okay, there we go. All right, so now I have two marbles. There we go. And if I want to make more, I can just click on them and say Control D, 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 D. Ooh, I don't know what will happen if they're stacked up like that. I'm kind of curious now. Let's see. Oh, they just kind of... <laughs> that's interesting. All right, so uh, I've got all these marbles, or I've got some marbles. Um, the good thing about using a scene is if you use a scene, if you want to make changes to both of these things without having to go to each individual one, you go to the marble scene, and then you can change the size of it. Um, or make changes to it and it'll change to all of them uh, these marbles um, you don't want to change the parent if it's a rigid body it was giving me some errors when I did that so I'm gonna change the size of the mesh and then the collision shape so I'll go to scale and let's do 0.4 on the mesh and that also we're gonna have to do uh, 0.4 on the size of the collision so Control S will save that. Then if you come over here, 
and you'll see that these new marbles that I made are now smaller and they kind of fit better with the size of this box and container that I have alright so we've got some marbles I want them to bounce when they hit the ground or when they hit things so let's go to marble I'm at the marble scene click on the parent here and then you'll see physics material over here on the side override I'm gonna open that and say new physics material and then when I click it you'll see it's got some extra things I can play around with one of them is friction and roughness and bounce I'm gonna try out bounce I don't remember what exactly what I used in that video and it's gonna be up to you what you want to use but I'm gonna use 0.45 save it control s I'll go back to play this scene here and you'll see that when it falls it bounces now that might be too much bounce it might not be enough bounce that's gonna be up to you I'm gonna go ahead and change it to 0.35 so I got 0.35 now so the bounce is a little bit lower 0.35 I don't want them bouncing all over the place and bouncing out and we'll eventually have to add like a, a glass to cover the front but there we go that bounce is okay with me alright perfect okay um, we also want to be able to change the color of the marble we're not gonna get all the way into that right now but I'll show you where it's at so if you go to marble and then come over here to the side on the mesh the mesh is like the the picture or the texture what we see and if you come to vis no no surface material we're gonna want to add a surface material so new uh, let's just do this I think it's the standard one so we'll do standard and then again you'll click that image and it'll give you a bunch of options there are a lot um, I just want to change the color so you go to albedo and then you can adjust the color like that so you can change the color of the marble to whatever you want I'll do control s and then when you come over here and you play your scene again you'll see that the marbles have a color now they're both green because they're both apart of this marble scene here but I just wanted to show you that you could change that color alright let's go ahead and see if we can add one of those pegs so we're gonna wanna make a peg um, I'm gonna make the peg in this scene because I want to see it the size relative to what we've created so I'm gonna click on the main pegboard here I'm gonna add a static body pull it out here um, I need to um, I'm gonna call this the peg so I'll rename that to peg I'm gonna add a mesh mesh that I want to use I'm just gonna use a cylinder a new cylinder mesh right there and then I'm gonna go ahead and add Oh, um, a collision collision shape 3D I'll use that same shape new, new cylinder shape so it's got a collision on it and now I'll start moving it and rotating it um, another thing that's good to do is if you use this little button here it's called group selected things together it won't allow you to separate them if I like try to click and drag and move it and I um, that'll make it where I can't separate the two without having to actually physically try to do it um, if you use the selector button it'll always select the parent whereas you it's possible to select something that's not the parent so see right there when I clicked on that backboard it grabbed the mesh and so if I tried to pull I think it would separate the two yeah see it separated the two so on these it's a good idea to use this to to make it where you can't select the mesh or the um, collision shape 
separate from each other. Now if they're a scene, you, I don't think you'll be able to do that, but it, it's probably also a good idea to do the same, like the marble, click that there. So I kind of linked all those together so I won't be able to separate them unless I actively try to do that. All right, let's go ahead and turn this guy. So we'll turn it. Um, when you're trying to turn these things, it's obnoxious to get it exactly right with the rotate button. You'll, If you're trying to get exactly on it, it's best to use these numbers here. So I'll say 90, so that turns it perfectly 90 degrees. And I don't want the peg to be that big, so I'm going to scale it. Um, I'm going to unlink it again. Let's do uh, 0.25 maybe. Man, those little hints are not great. Sometimes 0.25. So I got 0.25 on both of those. Now let's move this peg to see if... I don't know if we look... Yeah, so that looks about right, the size-wise. Okay, so I've got a peg. I probably want to save this peg as its own scene. So that's about the right dimensions that I want. So if I right click on this and I say save branch as a scene, it will do the same thing as what I did with the marble. It'll create its own scene. So I'll say save branch as scene. And it's gonna say, where do you wanna save it? I wanna go to scenes and objects. So this is gonna get saved in the uh, folder for objects so save all right it's got this little warning is because I misshaped it or whatever it probably be better to do your collision a little bit different but like I said we're we're kind of just getting used to the difference or used to these new buttons and stuff here all right um, this part's gonna be a little bit tedious but I'm gonna start adding the pegs for this to, to float down on. Alright, so the first peg, um, let's get the positions. Let's get some like good positioning here. So 0.5 on the Z and then 11.5. I kind of maybe I want to use a whole number. 12? No, not 12. So we'll start out at 11. And what what is Z in this context? Let's see what happens. I'm going to see what Z is. It, yeah. So actually, I do think 0.5 is right. Okay, so that 0.5 is just absolutely perfect, I think. All right, so now when I add another one, I'm going to keep the 11 for this um, height and then 0.5 is never going to change but my X is going to change so let's duplicate this piece now if I look at the the transform here I'm gonna want to move it over let's move it over by like 2 so 2 is pretty far if I grab the marble and I put it in the middle you can kinda get a feel that that's too far apart. So it's not two. What's 1.5 look like? That's okay. What does one look like? Probably one. That's probably a pretty decent distance. I don't know. It could it could possibly be smaller, or I could change the size of the marble. Um, We'll, we'll probably end up it changing the size of the marble. That'd probably be easier. Let's use that simple number right there, though. Um, it would also probably be helpful if these pegs were a different color so I could see what's happening. Right now, they're the same color as the front. So let's go to the peg. Um, how did I get here? I'm on the scene. Oh, I also see that the peg is like up high here. Oh, yeah, forget it. I'll just leave it alone. Let's go to the mesh, and let's do surface material override, and we'll add a material, and then we'll do a color. So albedo, and I don't know, I'll give it a color, whatever. 
maybe red maybe red so I'll pick a red color and I'll save it control s now when I go back I can clearly see the pegs right there all right I'm gonna keep going with this video even though it's well I'll pick up in the next one I'll go do another video